I'm curious, you know, and I, I've seen, I've had conversation with you about this, Ray, and, and, and Jeffrey, I've seen you speak about this. And for me, this is one of the most exciting things, the idea of these AI models helping us to discover new physics and chemistry and biology. What do you imagine on that, on Jeffrey, on this, on the, you know, the speed of discovery of uh, things that are magic, right, from something that's so far advanced? I agree with Ray about biology being a very good bet, because in biology, there's a lot of data and there's a lot of just things you need to know about because of evolution. Evolution's a sort of tinkerer, and there's just a lot of stuff out there. And so if you look at things like AlphaFold, it's trained on a lot of data. Actually, not that much by current standards, but being able to get an approximate structure for a protein very quickly um, is an amazing breakthrough, and we'll see a lot more like that. If you look at domains where uh, narrower domains where AI has been very successful, like AlphaGo or Alpha Zero for chess, what you see is that um, this idea that they're not creative is nonsense. So AlphaGo came up with, I think it was move 37, which amazed the professional Go players. They thought it was a crazy move. It must be a mistake. And if you look at Alpha Zero playing chess, it plays chess like just a really, really smart human. Within those limited domains, they've clearly shown exceptional creativity. And I don't see why they shouldn't have the same kind of creativity in science, especially in science where there's a lot of data that they can absorb and we can't. You know, the Moderna vaccine, uh, we tried several billion different mRNA sequences and came out with the best one. And, that, and after two days, we used that. We did test it on humans, which I think we won't do for, for very much longer. Uh, but that took 10 months. It still was a record. Uh, that was the best uh, vaccine. And we're doing that now with cancer. And there's a number of cancer vaccines that look very, very promising. Uh, again, done by, computer, by computers. And they're definitely creative. But is that, is that caught being caused by randomly trying a whole, you know, Darwinian trying a whole bunch of things? Yeah, but what's, or, wrong, what's wrong with that? Let well, me. nothing's wrong, but is there intuition? Uh, is there intuition ha uh, uh, occurring in these models? Well, if you look at the Move 37 for AlphaGo, that was definitely intuition involved there. There was Monte Carlo rollout too, but it's, it's playing with intuition about what moves to consider and how good the position is for it. It had neural nets for that that capture intuition. And so I see no reason to think it might not be creative. In fact, for the large language models, as Ray pointed out, they know much more than we do and, you can th and they know it in far fewer connections. We have about 100 trillion synapses. They have about a trillion connections. So what they're doing is they're compressing a huge amount of information into not that many connections. And that means they're very good at seeing the similarities between different things. They have to see the similarities between all sorts of different things to compress the information into their connections. That means they've seen all sorts of analogies that people haven't seen because they know about all sorts of things that no one person knows about. And that's, I think, the source of creativity. So you can ask people, you can ask people, for example, what what's he, what is a why is a compost heap like an atom bomb? If you ask GPT-4, it'll tell you. It'll start off by telling you, well, the energy scales are very different and the time scales are very different. But then it'll get on to the idea of as the compost heap gets hotter, it gets hotter faster. The idea of an exponential explosion is just at a much slower time scale. And so it's it's understood that, and it's understood that because it's has to, had to compress all this knowledge into so few connections. And to do that, you have to see the relations between similar things. And that, I think, is the source of creativity, seeing relations that most people don't see between what apparently are very different things, but actually have an underlying commonality. And they'll also be very good at coming up with solutions to the kinds of problems we had in the last session. I mean, we, we haven't really thought through it, uh, but what we call large language models are, gonna, are ultimately going to solve that. And we shouldn't call it large language models because they deal with a lot more than language.